We all have gardens that have non-natives in them, and we all have gardens with cultivars in them, myself included. I love them all. I just love them all. But when I think about the type of garden that's really utilitarian to pollinators, it's not those cultivars. And I brought one of my fun Tell books. Tell me what the cultivar is. A cultivar is a cross between different species, or sometimes hybrid. between, it's a hybrid. Or it's got the twice as many chromosomes or three times as many chromosomes. So you get, so here is Camellia. Camellia is found in a lot of southern gardens. It's just a German thing. And this is a Camellia that's called Camellia Vietnam Census. It's a native Camellia from Vietnam. Little petal, simple thing, nice, nice little guy. And here are cultivars. It goes on forever. It goes on forever. And you know what? Most of these cultivars do not provide any pollen or nectar. They're eye candy. Not to say that there isn't a place for this. I love this stuff. But when it comes down to saying my garden is a pollinator garden, no, it's really not. It's really not. It needs to be the species that haven't been genetically manipulated to make three or four or five or six times the petals because it's really pretty and it's very commercially saleable. It's, it's, it's this guy that provides the food. So when these gardens are developed, that needs to be taken into consideration. We don't want to beat out all the cultivars. I have, I have plants in my garden that came, you know, from next door to my grandma's chicken coop. They're not native. They're of no use to insects, but, you know, they're, they're meaningful to me. But so, so it's the context here, and the, the native material is the stuff which keeps the pollinators happy. Now, Jan, excuse me, are you, are you going to give us some examples of native pollinators? Sure. Um, okay, I'll give you some that people recognize immediately as really nice of black eyed Susans. Mm -hmm. Extremely useful. Um, some of the anemones, very useful. Violets. Um, and it goes on and on. And we, and I will provide those lists for folks so they know that it's, it's, it's uh, as a matter of fact, there are some natives that we would never think are of useful and actually get a bad rap, goldenrod, point, point, uh, case in point. People think it causes hay fever. That pollen is so darn heavy, it's not blowing in the wind. It's stuck on the critters. So uh, the goldenrods are tremendously useful for native plants and gardens. Um, and although it looks like they could be pretty sneezy, they are not. Um, and I, I can provide more, but there's a list in, in, you know, the kinds of environments that are generated here could be signed, interpreted, used for education, seeds could be gathered, given elsewhere, sold, whatever. This is really untapped. This website here is the uh, number of us in regional botanists in our country have developed this. And if you just Google celebrating wildflowers, this has just got a ton of information on it, just a ton.